We are just two months away now from the start of the candidates 2022. So it's taking place from the 16th of June to the 5th of July. It will be in Madrid, Spain. Eight players battling it out to see who will face Magnus Carlsen for the World Chess Championship early next year. I really can't wait for that one. I'll be supporting Ali Reza Firuzja because I love his games. I love his young talent and style. But in the build up to the candidates, I do want to look at the other players playing and I'm starting with Hikaru Nakamura. So he's qualified by winning the FIDE Grand Prix. An exceptional performance coming back from some time away. He's been streaming for about two years, risen to fame, such a personality, done so much for chess, got tons of people into it. Awesome guy. So let's have a look at one of his games against Alexander Grischuk. This really was nice. He was playing white here. Let's see what happened. So he kicked off with pawn to d4. Sasha goes knight f6, pawn c4, pawn g6, knight c3 from Hikaru. And this is the first moment of note because if black wants a Grunfeld, then they'll go pawn d5 here but Sasha goes bishop to g7, and this wasn't wholly unexpected to Nakamura because he was leading the group at this stage, the other players were chasing him, and so Sasha wants to play aggressively, mix it up, he goes for this king's Indian. So Hikaru goes e4, pawn to d6, and now bishop to e2, this is a side move, the main move there is knight to f3, and after castles, we now have bishop to e3. So the g1 knight is being delayed in its development. White has aggressive ideas in these structures. Very often you're going queen d2, castles queen side, f3, g4, h4, all this kind of fun stuff, depending on how black plays. Now there are different moves here for black. You can go c5, for example. Sasha goes for e5, the classic king's Indian move. And here Hikaru goes d5, closing the center. And this makes a lot of sense when we understand that he wants to launch a flank attack on the king side, which we'll soon see. So knight a6 from Sasha, really logical move, coming into c5. Now Hikaru goes pawn to h4, and this is a big part of the system, that aggressive king side play. So knight c5, attacking this pawn. Now you don't want to give up this wonderful bishop, and you don't want to go f3 to defend it either, or then knight h5 can come. Coming into g3, that's a bit annoying. You've shut out this e2 bishop when you go f3. So that's why queen c2 defended the pawn. And now c6 from Sasha was played, really logical. I just want to show you, if you do go h5 to shut down that pawn advance, you're just playing into white's hands with f3, g4 coming, all that kind of stuff. It's too fast for white as an attack. So c6 is principled. Now this pawn came to h5 anyway. We had a capture in the center and Hikaru correctly recaptures with the c pawn. If you go with e pawn, you're running into this bishop f5 stuff. So c takes on d5 played. And now queen to a5. So it's pinning this knight to the king. That means this pawn is now on prees. And so Hikaru is going to have to defend it with f3. But before he defends it, he throws in pawn h6. And he says on his own video where he analyzes this game, a really instructive video, by the way, if you want something deeper, that closing the h file seems a bit illogical when you've got the rook here. But actually, after the bishop drops back, there are good points to this. You create space. There are checkmating threats in future, potentially. Plus, black's bishop looks kind of dead now, as we can see. So pawn f3 now from Hikaru. And here Alexander could now have gone knight to h5. It was another way to play, coming to g3, using the fact the bishop is now blocked. But white can still keep a decent initiative after pawn a3, preparing b4. So instead he goes for a more principled move. He plays bishop to d7 after f3, just developing a piece, looking to connect those rooks. And now rook b1 from Hikaru. He's still in his preparation here. He's threatening b4. So the knight came to a4, great move from Sasha, pressuring the c3 knight, not passively retreating the queen, losing time, and here Hikaru goes queen to d2, breaks that pin, and now black doesn't want to let this knight come to b5, that would be dangerous, so chops on c3 occurred, the pawn recaptured, and now the queen dropped back to c7 here, holding this pawn.
So Hikaru now goes pawn to g4. He's getting on with it on the king side. And there were some crazy lines here with bishop takes on g4. The idea is that after the pawn recaptures, you pick up on e4, the queen gives ground, and then you win another pawn. But Hikaru showed how these rooks could lift into the game here. This one via h3, the bishop back to d2. White should still be doing pretty well here. Plus, Sasha was getting really low on time already. He was about an hour down on Hikaru. Hikaru was in prep. Plus, Sasha's just a time trouble addict as it is. Really gets low on time. So he didn't take on g4. Instead, he simply dropped this bishop back to c8. Now, it might look really weird, but this is quite deep and it's really nice re-maneuvering of the pieces. So after Hikari goes knight to h3 developing, coming back to f2, Sasha goes knight to d7. So he's looking at this c5 square and also wants to bring the bishop to f6 and e7, so he liberates that one a bit more. Now this knight came to f2, bishop f6, castles from Hikaru, might look weird, but that h file is firmly shut now, so instead he wants to play for f4 in future. The bishop hit e7, king h2, prophylaxis from Hikaru, coming off this open diagonal, the knight hit c5, and now here Hikaru mentioned that he wanted to go f4, but he rejected it because after captures, queen d4, threatening mate, pawn f6, bishop takes, now black's got this positional threat of going knight d7 to e5, and Hikaru was correct, this position is just level, black solved the problems. So he didn't go f4, instead he went knight d3, and he didn't love this one because the principle goes that if you're the side with the space, pawns on d5, h6, you don't want to exchange pieces, you want to keep your opponent cramped. So this exchange is pieces, after pawn b6, here Hikaru took, the pawn recaptured, but in compensation for this, he's gotten rid of that knight which was a bit clumsy, blocking the rook, he can now go f4, and that's what he does. And also after captures, we note that this knight's gone, it can't come back and sit on e5. So the bishop now captured on f4, bishop d7 from Sasha, redeveloping, connecting the rooks, and now here Hikaru could wait if he wanted to, play a few shuffling moves, but he goes pawn c4, very direct, wanting to open this diagonal for the queen. And now best here was bishop to f6, immediately coming onto that diagonal. But Sasha was very low on time now, only five minutes, Hikaru had about 21, he's really under pressure. So he brings a rook to the b-file, queen c3 from Hikaru, threatening mate on g7, so pawn f6 was forced, Rook b3, and now this was a mistake from Sasha. He should really go queen to the 8 immediately. Instead, he goes rook b6, and this is just losing some time, not the best square for the rook. Hikaru can get on with his attack, pawn to g5 here. So rook f7 played, covers this g7 square. Now the bishop bounced back to c1, looking to come to b2, set up this battery. Queen d8 from Sasha, bishop b2. The queen came across to f8, overprotecting the g7 square, and also now if white were to ever take here, you can take here with check. So Hikaru goes king g2, he prophylactically moves the king away from that, bishop d8, and now Hikaru wanted to put the queen on e3, but then he moved it to f3, kind of changed his mind last moment, but then he didn't like this move so much, because it blocks bishop g4 to e6, in the lines where the bishop comes to a4 here. But as it was, Sasha just dropped this bishop back, he didn't bring it out to a4, Hikaru was still winning after bishop a4, or a lot better anyway, and now Hikaru goes queen to e3. So that explains this weird kind of queen shuffle that he's doing. They're both coming up to the time control, time is ticking down, but Sasha's especially low. He chops on b3, the pawn recaptures, and now here he makes a committal move, he could go pawn a5 and just try and wait on the position, and Hikaru was saying he didn't see a clear winning plan after, say, a position like this. Not so easy to break through, because you can't actually go e5 at any point. But what Sasha did instead was go pawn takes on g5. He didn't want to sit and suffer. So Hikaru now switches back to c3. He's threatening mate down here. So rook takes on f1 forced, gives the king a square, 
but now excellent execution of the attack. Hikaru comes down here with check, king f7, he takes here with check, the king has to give ground, and then he picks up a second pawn. And this is excellent calculation, because the rook can now drop back, blocking the check, but then white gets pawn h7. That pawn's actually going through. This bishop is a monster, as we can see. It's unavoidable. So we didn't have rook f7. King e7 was played instead. And now great calculation again from Hikaru. He chops on g5. This time the rook does block, but pawn h7. Another fantastic move. That one's going through. Sasha tried king to d7, opening the bishop, defending the rook, stepping out of the pin. But now a great move from Hikaru, queen g8, forced resignation on the spot. Because no matter what you try, this pawn's going through, there just isn't the counterplay for black. Say, for example, you check, king g1, queen f4, threatening mate, but then we simply queen. It's game over, there's no checks down the g-file either. So a fantastic crush from Hikaru Nakamura, and I'm really excited to see what he can do at the candidates in June. If you enjoyed this video, then do consider subscribing to never miss another in the series. And if you want to see my whole Norway chess playlist, click here. Thanks for watching. See you soon.